Look at Todd just pulled in. Holy cow. Nice fish. He's gonna spit. Nice fish. Did you like that teaser? Um, that was just filmed recently, yeah, just probably two weeks ago. Um, you may wonder, wonder why are we starting a new fishing video channel? It seems like there's so many of them out there. Um, some really good ones too. I, I think about Al Linders, the Linder guys over in, in the uh, Bemidji area doing their in fishermen and you know, there's just so many of them. There's some commercially commercial ones out of Duluth and well, this one's going to be a little bit different. I've been out on, on YouTube and so forth. Excuse me, I'll have a cup, sip of coffee. Discussing, uh, I haven't seen anything really super focused on what we do. You probably came across our name, maybe you're doing a, a YouTube search. Adventure Fishing, Northern Minnesota. Well... What we focus on, my friends and I, we look for lakes that are hard to get into, and there's many of them in uh, the Arrowhead. What, what we call the Arrowhead of Minnesota is if you take a line roughly from the tip of Lake Superior, the easternmost tip of Lake Superior, draw a line uh, towards, say, I Falls, International Falls, and go east from there. Uh, a lot of that's boundary waters. In the boundary waters canoe area, during soft water, uh, spring, summer, and fall, uh, you, you can only take a canoe back in there and paddle yourself into those lakes. On hard water, you have to walk back in. Um, there's countless numbers of lakes. There's more water in the area I've just described, the Arrowhead, than you could ever fish in a lifetime. And uh, my friends and I focus on finding ones that uh, are particularly uh, yeah, that look particularly good for large northern pike. Uh, that's our forte. It's not, that's predominantly what we do. We don't exclusively fish for pike, but uh, that's, that's what we're hunting for, the big ones. And uh, outside of the con uh, boundary waters, you can take uh, our snowmobiles, our four wheelers in. On uh, many of our adventures, we have to walk in, we have to carry canoe and so forth. Uh, as we proceed with this channel, I'm hoping to show some of the lessons that we've learned over the years on how to get into these lakes, how to find these lakes. Uh, thank you, Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, the Minnesota DNR. Uh, they have cataloged a lot of these lakes up here, not all, but a lot of them. And there are hints on their webpage on how to gain access to some of these lakes. Um, where the hidden trails are and so forth. Uh, but we'll get into all that in, in the uh, months to come. Uh, but what I wanted to do right now is just introduce myself. I'm Todd. Uh, I live in Carleton, Minnesota. As I'm sure you can already tell, I am not a prof professional uh, broadcaster. Although I have worked at TV stations, the, uh, the, the in front of the camera talent was, was not for me. But I'm hoping that um, the information that you'll get from this uh, YouTube channel will be of consequence and, and make up for some of the lack of professionalism. Although my wife did buy a GoPro, that's yeah, a GoPro 9. She bought that for me for Christmas. And um, I told her kind of my dream about doing this. And I've been doing this a number of years. And, uh, and it would be kind of fun to share with some other people um, exactly what we're doing. And, and at the end of our videos, I'm hoping to uh, uh, just give a little extra bonus as well. Uh, so without further ado, here are some of the videos that uh, I've accumulated over a number of years with my iPhone. Hope you enjoy them.
I'll, I'll leave it up to you if you want me to drop that live bait down there. But... Yeah, let's drop that live bait down there. Okay. Just, just um, give this to me. Just dialed up nice fish. Right on me. Good morning, everyone. We're on our way fishing. It's January 7th, 2022, and we have a beautiful day today. Bright sky, doesn't appear to be any wind, at least not yet. So here's my fishing partner, Brent. Good morning. And We're excited about an opportunity yeah. to get out on this water and get some good video. One thing I wanted to point out, Brent, is minus 31 degrees that Fahrenheit. That's the coldest I've ever been out fishing. Me too. I don't remember fishing as a kid this cold in Illinois. But anyway, it's so beautiful. And what we're going to do is we're going to check in after we get everything all set up. Talk to you all later. Okay. Oh, nice fish. I'm in right up here. Okay. <laughs> it's so fast. The floor of the shelter. Nice. That's a nice fish. Look at Todd just pulled in. Holy cow. Nice fish. He's going to spit. Nice fish. And guess what? I was holding the bear boot completely still again. Okay. When he came in. Watch out for that. Uh... Yeah. Here, let me get my pliers out. All right. Any extra hooks in that mouth? I'm looking. <laughs> the reason Brent brings that up is we lost a fish at the hole about an hour ago or so. Look at that. He took that clear down to his gullet. I hope this fish isn't too big to keep. Oh, there's the hook right there. The extra one or yours? My mine. Okay. Let me... See if I can't get this out of him. Well, he wants that that lure back. You know that was well, he worked hard on that lure yeah, for sure. Just landed another fish. He's twenty seven inches long, and this one came out of the sight hole so hard that he flew into the heater and shut it down. So that thing's. Now soaking wet. I'm not even sure if it's uh, going to relight. It got so wet. But anyway, here's the fish. I got this one on. I believe it was blue, a blue and white marabou. Let's see if I can look down his throat. Yeah, settle down, please. Uh, bear with me. There it is. Yeah, it's the blue and white with the white dragon tail. Okay, like I said, this is a, a what is it, 27, 28 inch fish caught on this, this version here. He's a little bit torn up, but not too bad. And we'll release this fish. 
in many ways, this is my favorite part. Letting him go. Off he goes. Well, I hope you liked watching those videos. I know we enjoyed making them. Obviously, over, over several years, and you can see the different levels of quality as we went, and, and it, our, some of our techniques had evolved as well. But there's one thing here at the end of this uh, video that I would like to uh, share with you. Uh, myself and the individuals that are, are were working together to make these videos were all Christians. And I'd like to share with you uh, just a story from the book of Acts in the Bible. Now, the book of Acts is the story of what happened to the believers in Jesus Christ. Now, we have Jesus who was born, he was crucified, and he rose again and ascended from earth to his Father in heaven. Now, but the story didn't end there. The story about the church of Jesus Christ continued on, and that's what the book of Acts is about. And I'm going to read a story to you uh, from Acts chapter 3, starting with verse 1. So just bear with me as I read this. And I've got to get my glasses right here. There we go. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a lame man from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate. So he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John enter, about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have silver or gold to give you, but I'll give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. A couple of things I'd like to point out about this story. is that the, the scripture mentions that he sat at the temple gate his entire life getting uh, money so he could you know, have some kind of meager existence. Well, Jesus quite often went in and out of the temple in Jerusalem. And for, for, for reasons that were in the future, Jesus didn't heal them. He did heal this lame man. Now, can you imagine being this lame man who is at the temple? He's heard about Jesus. He knows that he is the healer, that he is a prophet, that he has the supernatural power of healing that came from his father, Jesus being 100% man and 100% God. But he didn't heal him. I would imagine if I were him, I would feel kind of left out. I would feel, man, not even uh, Jesus is paying attention to me. The scripture says that when uh, he asked Peter and James, excuse me, Peter and John for some money, Yet it suggested that he wasn't even looking up, that he kept his head down in a point that he was just so down and out because Peter asked him to raise his head. Well, this was all part of the divine plan. Jesus, his intention wasn't to heal. Why? Because he wanted this story to come forth in Acts so that the disciples could show that the church was to receive the same power that uh, Jesus had when he was on earth. But I, what I really want to point out from this story is that you, know, you may feel down and out. You may feel that um, Jesus has abandoned you. Well, I assure you that he hasn't. He has a plan for your life. He desires to have a relationship with you. You may have lame legs or you may be wounded on the inside. But what I'm saying is Jesus is there for you that he loves you and he cares very much for you and desires a relationship with you. As is often the case when you do something for the very first time, it doesn't go as according to plan. Well, that's the case here. I ran into problems with our video editor with uh, Adventure Fishing. But I'm gonna close off with this and uh, we'll see you next time on the next episode. And uh, 
Until then, we'll see you on the water.